Hey everybody, welcome to Sandstone Cares podcast series. Thanks for joining us today. Today I'm joined by Shelly Young. Shelly, thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Shelly, tell our audience a little bit about you and, and what your background is to, to get a sense for what the work you do. Okay, um, so I am, I guess if we back it up a little bit, I have a 24 year old in recovery. And through our experience of um, finding treatment and understanding what needed to happen in our family to provide an environment that supported recovery, I really started digging around into, you know, how do, how do we get here? How did we get here? Yeah. Where are we now? And how do we live in recovery? Yeah. So I uh, just really started going out meeting people and learning and trying to understand how we could change mm -hmm. the way addiction's treated because I didn't feel as a mom supported the way I needed to feel supported or guided the, in a way that was helpful for my son. Yeah. So once we had, we had an intervention mm -hmm. and um, he went into treatment and he stayed into treatment for a really long time. Yeah. And during that time, I just kept studying and asking questions and learning and meeting with people in recovery. And one, I started a support group for families that where we had professional speakers come every time and people left with actionable solutions because that's yeah. what I needed. Yeah. I didn't want to sit in a circle and talk about what was going on. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to change. Yeah. So uh, um, one of the speakers that came suggested I become an interventionist. Okay. So I got trained as an ARISE interventionist, which is a family system model, which mm -hmm. very much aligned with what I believed needed to happen um, to influence treatment for people with addiction. And mm -hmm. we were successful in that type of model, even though I was kind of intuitively putting it together myself. Yeah. That's the long answer. Okay. And you do work with Arise outside of just being a Rise interventionist as well. Yes, I work with Arise. I work closely with uh, the founder of Arise, Judith Landau, Dr. Judith Landau, and I take the calls that come in on the service line, and I speak to families regularly and get a sense of where they are, what they need, and we put them on a path of recovery, whether it's with an intervention or. Um, referring them out to a clinician or a community program we always leave them with some actionable solution yeah yeah which is great that families can call the arise hotline and speak to somebody such as yourself yeah. who's had a, a real from really kind of organic experience to professional experience mm -hmm. and and that's that's an amazing service um and so between all those, you know, items that you've worked in and, and continue to do work, what, what's the piece that, you, if you were to communicate with our audience today something, what's the piece that you would really want to kind of hone in on, um, thinking about it from, you know, perhaps it's a family member watching this um, or or potential uh, person who's struggling with, with a substance use issue. What, what is it you would want to share about with them? I think the number one most important thing to realize is the importance of family engagement in the recovery process. Yeah. If the family isn't part of the recovery, then you're part of the problem. Yeah. You know, you're not if you're asking someone to get well and you're not willing to get well yourself, then we're not going to have a well environment, yeah. you know? And I realized through my own experience that addiction flourished in our house. Mm -hmm. It it loved whatever was going on there. So I had to really think, okay, what is my part here? And how do we now create an environment that supports recovery so that my son would live, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I also grew up in an alcoholic environment. So my mom, before she passed away, spent two years in AA and um, was separate, you know, like that was her thing. And we were over here and we didn't really know like how we could be supportive mm -hmm. um, or, or how, like, 
I don't know, we felt like that was just a separate part. But yeah. the way that we've um, come at it with my son is we've really done our work on our side to yeah. understand yeah. like how we got here and what patterns needed to be broken and um, how we were influencing addiction rather than influencing recovery right. or even treatment. Yeah. Um, and you know, what kind of messaging was out there that I felt like was just wrong right. messaging or didn't line up with yeah. my mother heart or my mother's intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the thing I'm most passionate about is changing the way we treat addiction within the family, yeah. within the family. Yeah. And, and I think programs from my perspective, obviously sandstone care, we, we do, uh, uh, what I would feel is a really great job at that. We involve the family, you know, with our own family therapist, and they're coming every week in a mandatory family group. Mm-hmm. And um, why do you, why do you think it is that some treatment programs, at least, aren't doing that depth of work with the family? I don't know why they wouldn't. The science is behind it, and yeah. the evidence is there that yeah. it makes a huge impact. And I don't even work with programs that don't have a family program. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I get calls because we've been so open about our family story Mm -hmm. in social media, in our community, in um, you know our area, just everywhere. Um, I get calls all the time. Like, what do I do? You know, how do I handle this? And um, where should I go? Or where do I take my person? Mm -hmm. And if it's not, if they don't have a family program. They're not on my radar. Right. They're not on my radar. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been, not only do they need you to um, get some kind of clinical treatment or uh, some kind of support, you've been, it's traumatic. Yeah. You know, it's traumatic to be living in active addiction or with someone in active addiction. Yeah. And that has to be taken care of or you're always going to have that trigger you're always going to have that fear so all that stuff has to be um treated properly it's it's wounding and if we don't go in and clean the wounds you know they get infected yeah we've got to go in and clean them out and dress them and take care yeah you know and or you're still carrying resentments Mm -hmm. or you're still operating in the pattern that you know somebody Somebody said to me once, uh, right, not long after my son was in treatment, that the family relapses first, mm. and I it scared me. Yeah, it scared me. I was like, oh, what do I have to do so that doesn't happen? Right, you know. So, yeah, um, it really scared me. So yeah. I was like, okay, tell me what to do. I'll do it. Right. I went to every family program. I went. I went to the. Um, family education meetings down at VCU in Richmond Mm -hmm. and where they had the the speakers come and that's what I recreated up here for a time being and uh, I just asked a lot of questions Mm -hmm. and I I went to people who were in recovery and was like what what do you do what do you what do you need you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. yeah and where would you point a family who's trying to get some of that support um, or education in the DC area right now I know your group is is no longer available um, but where can people go to get some of that education so you guys have one yes. here yeah. which is outstanding and then uh, Karen mm. there's Karen parents in Bethesda and mm-hmm. in um, Herndon which is near me mm-hmm. and that's where I send all families there yep. because those meetings are run by parent trained facilitators mm-hmm. so I feel like it's very important to get messaging from people who are trained yeah you know I don't necessarily believe that sick families should be leading sick families so yeah. well families should be leading yeah to, you know getting everybody to the other side yeah um, I think there's very much power in our storytelling and understanding like I did this and this worked or I did that sure. and that didn't work or needing a safe place to express yourself yeah. in that kind of situation. But if you're looking for evidence-based practices yeah. and um, clinical recommendations, then I think you should go where there's training yeah. facilitators. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, I agree. And that's why we dedicate our family clinician 
um, to be able to provide that to the community and and I, and I love that Karen has structure as well in that yeah. and um, you brought up earlier social media and and it's just something that's kind of uh, relevant right now and I'd be curious to get your thoughts where there is some um, deceptive practices happening in the advocacy space on, on places like Facebook mm-hmm. particularly with um, groups that are um, uh, put out there as a resource for family members to go and get support um, and there is an article in The Verge that came out recently that demonstrated that some of these groups have more deceptive practices and might be um, motivated to get somebody to a particular type of treatment center what are your thoughts on that and what where do we go to address that type of um, deceptive practice well, my first thought is that's gross mm. you know that's gross because we are in a state of crisis when mm-hmm. we're reaching out for help like that and for someone to take advantage of that that moment is is really cruel mm. Um, I think that unfortunately there is a lot of that kind of practice in the realm but I think you just have to really search for trusted providers you know like really look at trust for trusted providers and people that um, are doing this they're are Mm heart-based you know we have to have heart-based practices Mm -hmm. Um, it, it bothers me, you know, and I, I do know about the, there's a lot of, like, moms groups on right. on Facebook, and I'm, I've joined several of them, but I find them, the ones that I've been a part of, or, you know, I look through and see what's mm-hmm. going on, and sometimes I share my stories, because I think we need more recovery stories out there. Yeah. Um, but it's, the... Uh, it's almost like its own like negative loop that's going on and you can see who needs help and if there's people preying on those people that's wrong yeah that's wrong yeah would you suggest that people just stay out of those groups given where they're at right now or what are your thoughts I think that those groups have are a place of expression there's there's one group in particular though that is really like the wailing wall Mm -hmm. like every day there's a mother wailing over the death of their child Mm. and so it's hard to watch it's so hard to watch and in that in that space it's providing a place of expression and I'm all for expression I think that the disease um, steals your voice and uh, and the way to heal is through connection and expression Mm -hmm. so having the place to express yourself is good but there also being um, moderated by and people are giving advice that are do not have well children yeah and I don't think that's okay yeah I don't think that's okay and they won't allow people like me who have credentials Mm -hmm. to um, put forth any guidance because it appears that I'm trying to get it might appear that I'm trying to get business, but so it's hard for me to watch. Yeah. You know, yeah. where I want to, my helper fixer mode clicks right on and wants to be like, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't do that. Don't go there. You right, know what right. I mean? Sure, yeah. sure. So, where can people reach out to you, Shelly? Is there a way that they can reach out to you and talk to you about your opinion and what they can do to get well or get education or move forward or resources? Yeah, I have a website and it's Empower Intervention because I do not believe that we are powerless. Mm -hmm. Um, In this realm, I believe that we can rebuild our power or restore our power and that we need our power to um, to overcome addiction and its impact on the family. Um, So Empower Intervention or I have my own Um, website shellylyoung.com where I write and I can come I go speak out in the community so I speak at middle schools high schools um, parents groups Uh, I spoke at the DEA I Mm. spoke at um, 
the ONDCP, like, I, you yeah. know, wherever I get invited yeah. to share the message that recovery is possible and that the, it's important to invest in family recovery, yeah. and I'll, I'm willing to show up for that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll put those links in the uh, description. Um, and thank you, Shelly, for all that you do for uh, folks struggling and families struggling and helping to put the right sort of education yeah. and message out there. And thanks for joining us today. And Thank you for inviting me. We are on a team to get people to the other side. And yeah. so we just keep doing it. Awesome. Well, thanks. thank you, Shelly. And thanks, everybody who watched today. And we'll see you next time.